Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Fix Me Roulette. So today we're gonna tackle another new random Fix Me in the Serenity OS code base. And we will do that by grepping for Fix Me, piping to shove, and then head N1 gives us the first result. Uh, and here goes, click. Okay, uh, kernel interrupts CPP line 37. Uh, what's that in sysfs, I think? Line 37. Sysfs interrupts try generate. And then the fix me here is fix me, determine the responsible CPU for each interrupt handler. Hmm. So presumably this is for some file named interrupt in the, um, actually let me, uh, in the sysfs setup and run. Let's find out what's going on there. Also, who added this fix me? I think maybe this was just moved from proc to sys recently. Um, because proc now just only has process stuff and sys kernel interrupts. Yeah, this is the thing. And JP was renamed to JSON. Okay, so it's a list of all of the interrupt handlers we have registered, I guess. And then lsirq is a command line tool that prints this out in a, a friendly table format here. So um, CPU zero, wait, what does that mean? CPU zero. Also, am I looking at the right thing actually? Is lsirq this? Syskernel interrupts, yes. But then it just hard codes CPU zero and it doesn't even look at the CPU here. So what is it that we would want to know? I don't think, I don't think we have like, um, the responsible CPU for each interrupt handler. Is there such a thing in our kernel that like um, a given interrupt handler is tied to a specific CPU? Enumerate interrupt handlers. <clears throat> Get invoking count. Uh, what? Oh, I guess that's the invocation count. Like how many times does interrupt happened. Hmm. I don't think it's associated with a specific CPU. Um, handle interrupt. Wait, so when an uh, interrupt happens, I wonder if um, on Linux they have something like this, like uh, proc. Oh, that was not the most. Oh, wow, what a readable thing. CPU zero, wait, so are we trying to mimic this thing here? <clears throat> so what I imagine this is like, this should be something like, how many times did this interrupt fire on this CPU? That would make more sense to me. Um, no machine, machine check exceptions, that's probably good. So yeah, that's that's what I think these are. So if you have multiple CPUs, you can see like for every interrupt, how many times did it fire on, how many times did that CPU handle that interrupt? Which would be interesting in a, a multi-processor context. 
And to track that, we would need to log when an interrupt occurs, um, which CPU is handling it. So I think CPU handler, like here, what we really want to do is like emit an array, I guess, instead of just a single number, because it's not that a, um, a CPU owns an interrupt, but rather it's that um, depending on which CPU is available when the interrupt happens, different CPU might handle the, um, might execute the interrupt handler. So at least that's that's my understanding of, of what the spirit of this field is, because we c clearly uh, have taken some inspiration from the Linux proc interrupts here. Um, we have CPU zero, but then we don't have any more. So first thing we got to do is run in uh, multiprocessor mode. So let's say um, Serenity kernel command line SMP on. Let me verify that I'm doing this correctly. I probably am because it just panicked on startup. Uh, lovely. Uh, okay, let's, let's try that one more time. Okay, we rebooted. And are we... Yes, we are scheduling on both cores. Good, okay. Uh, so... In this mode, we should have multiple CPUs here, but we don't. So I guess let's figure out how to do that. Um, so uh, 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 every, every interrupt handler needs to keep track of, um, we need an array of counters, or a vector of counters, I guess is fine. Um, so we'll call it like, um, well, it's the, what was it called? The invoke, get invoke, invoking count. Yeah, so then we, we get a chance to get rid of this uh, awkward name as well, which will be good. So call count, I see, so call count for some reason, we're truncating it to 32 bits here. Um, it's very odd. Okay, so call count and CPU handler. So this guy, let's get rid of that. And then we'll call this per CPU count. Per CPU call counts. This is going to be an array. Okay, so we'll start with that. And then <clears throat> um, for auto con, da, da, da. What, am I want, what do I want to enumerate here? I want to get the interrupt handlers. And then instead of having an invoking count, which is not used anywhere, um, we have the call Uh, the call count. Okay, S stop messing around, Andreas. Let's get to it. Um, per CPU call counts. So we can put those in a span, I think. Span. Um, per CPU call counts, let's say. Um, And then, 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 then. Maybe we'll just make it a, a vector for simplicity. It's not like we have many of these things. I just have to store it somewhere. Um, size T per CPU call counts. Yes. It's going to be a large number, potentially. So increment invoking counter. So this is the thing that gets called by the interrupt 
handler. So this thing, we'll have, we'll have to move this out of line because we're going to do something more advanced than just incrementing the number. We're also going to um, we're also going to get the current CPU ID. So increment invoke encounter. Also, let's change the name of this thing. It's just too awkward. Um, I should have been I uh, should have should have been a good boy maybe and done this in a separate patch. Yeah, let's do this separately. Invoking counter. Let's change the name of this first. So instead of increment invoking counter, we'll call it increment call count. And we can move it out of line while we're here because it's kind of unhealthy to have random inline stuff for no um, measured reason. And I'm reasonably confident that nobody measured this. It's just a cargo cult inlining. So increment call count, yes. M call count and oh, it's a U thirty two. Oh, I guess because of it's um, because it's atomic, then it's a U thirty two. Yeah, it's one of those things that will be so much nicer when we um, inevitably get rid of x eighty six and keep only x eighty six sixty four. Don't have to worry about uh, atomic operations on sixty four bit integers in the kernel. Um, but I guess, okay, fine. For now, let's just leave it 32 bit. Um, and call count. Okay, increment call count. So let's just update these. Okay. That seems good. Oh, I forgot the uh, JSON producing thing, Sisyphus. Call count, right. I think we'll just have this thing return a U32 because it reflects what it really is. Okay. That should be okay. So let's commit here. Uh, kernel, rename, generic, interrupt, handler, um, invoking count to call count. Yo. We're good. Yeah, we're good. And then now we can go back to what I wanted to do originally, which was adding the um, per CPU stuff. So, okay, so instead of the call count, we're just gonna do this. Also, I'm not even sure that this needs to be uh, atomic in the first place. It seems a bit excessive. As long as, um, if it's a 32-bit quantity and you're reading it from an aligned address, then as far as I know, it will be um, read atomically anyway. Although I may be wrong about that. And maybe it doesn't apply to ARM. I'm not sure. Anyway. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sure somebody can correct me. So let's see. Uh, so let's 
say per CPU call counts. And then increment call count will be uh, cool and uh, do it per CPU. And then this will be a span of U32 const per CPU call counts span. Yes. Okay. And then this fella right here will get the current um, current ID. Yeah, that's right. And Let's see. At this point, we should know how many CPUs there are at the time when we're creating a generic interrupt handler. So um, per CPU call counts, ensure capacity, um, processor count, is that it? The total processor count, yes. Okay. And actually this must succeed. So we're being a bit like, um, yeah, we're, we're not gonna allow this to fail. We don't have a, a path to <laughs> propagate an error if we can't uh, allocate a couple of bytes to store this. So that's okay. All right, so it should always be uh, vector will verify that, that this is a valid index um, and it will panic the kernel if it's not, so that should be okay. And then we want to look at interrupts in sysfs. Yes, call counts. So this will rename to per CPU call counts, get rid of CPU handler, which is where the fix me was, and then Uh, call count in uh, bum, 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 bum. handler dot per CPU call counts. Yes, and then we'll add them. Add call count. Click. Okay. Finish the array and then continue emitting JSON. Should be good. Okay. Per CPU call counts. Add. Oh, I gotta try that, of course, because it can fail to. Uh, if we run out of buffer space for the um, JSON that we're generating here in this SFS, we will get uh, an error. So we'll have to. Throw that out. Increment call count. <laughs> okay, maybe this was too early. Do we not have... This is so late. I feel like we must have figured out how many CPUs we have at this point. Um, maybe I'm not... Maybe I didn't do the right constructor. So this is a constructor. Do, do you have more constructors? Generic interrupt handler. There's just the one constructor. Ensure capacity processor count. Uh -huh, let's look here. Um, making space for <laughs> uh, per CPU call counts. Maybe this is too early. I just assumed, I guess, that the number of CPUs would be known at this point in time. Um, making space for one per CPU call counts. All right, all right, maybe I was not right about that then. Um, because we have more CPUs, evidently. Hmm, that's interesting. So we definitely can't do it at the point where we're making the, um, when the IRQ is happening, that's definitely too late. We could do it when you're registering the handler. 
Hmm. So who calls that? It's kind of goofy. This whole thing is a little goofy. Um, we can also take the easy cheesy way out for now and just say, um, I'm just gonna put 128, six, let's put 64 uh, and then, wait, wait a minute. I can't be adding a fix me here. This is a video about removing fix me's. <laughs> so I can't do that. That, that would be, um, that's not right. Uh, that's against the rules of the video, I guess, which admittedly we're making up as we go, but, um, can't be, can't be doing this. Hmm. What an interesting uh, problem. <laughs> um, I see. All right. So let's, I guess let's do it when it's, um, when it's being registered. So who does that? Register interrupt handler. It's done by... Uh, well, whatever. Um, that's a, that's a good time to do it, I think. So at this point, we're not registered. So here, let's do it right here. Because that means that after this point, somebody is going to be able to actually fire this uh, interrupt handler. So still not good. Ah, oh, dang it. Hmm. How many CPUs do I think I have? So. Now I set it so that we have four, but making space for one per CPU call counts. Okay, so when, we gotta find out when this thing gets set then. When does the processor count get set? Total processors. Who is the absolute jerk who's setting this so late? Who? I'd like to know who. Um, store. Okay. Processor early initialize. Oh, we're adding this when we're initializing another CPU? Hmm. Okay. So when the CPU boots, it just adds one to the number. I mean, that's fair enough. So we can't allocate in the IRQ handler. And I'm getting an interrupt. Where am I getting it? When we're initializing time management. Time management initialize, initialize timers, initializing an APIC timer. Sure. So we're initializing an APIC timer and then um, an IRQ happens. And then we want to increment the call count for the current CPU. Hmm. Oh, I guess you registered interrupt handlers before booting more CPUs. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Hmm. So how do we get out of this situation? I mean, having a um, slightly oversized buffer seems okay. Maybe I'm like overthinking that whole thing. Like in the sense that maybe that's not even worth a fix me. Maybe it's more like, yeah, we currently don't support more than that number of CPUs anyway. I think we have a limit somewhere actually what is that limit? Maybe we can piggyback on that actually. Hmm. Processor.h. I'm pretty sure we have um, 
here. Aha, note, we only support 64 processors at most at the moment, so allocate 64 slots of inline capacity in the container. How very interesting. I feel like this number here could be generalized, and then we can use that elsewhere. And then that gives us um, gives us an out for this. So let's see what they've done for the ARCH64 or ARM port, just to be uh, just to be good boys. So uh, they don't have this concept in the ARM port. Sure, kernel ARCH processor.h do you have an array of processors per chance oh you don't even have an array of processors you only have uniprocessor mode okay well my dear friends in the ar64 serenity community um i'm not going to worry about that then uh, and then we can come back to this later but let's generalize this thing to something we'll call it um, max CPU count or something like that, right? So const expert max CPU count, max CPU count, 64. Okay. And I don't want to break the build for the um, AR64 folks, so let's do this for them. In processor.h, we will simply do um, we'll, we'll do this, right? But uh, we'll just say one. Yeah. Okay. And then we can use the max CPU count. Well, we can use it right here. Aha. <laughs> okay. And then we don't need to, we don't need a vector. It's not doesn't need to allocate. So we should be all good. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit um, sneaky cheesy to to piggyback on the max CPU count, but I feel okay about that. I think that's a, a reasonable uh, path out of the dilemma. But we also got to look at this utility program because it needs to print out a lot more interesting stuff. Um, We'll see if, if we can get it to show up in the JSON output, first of all. Mm hmm. Come on now. Wow, linking the kernel takes a moment. Should probably set it up to build with mold. Okay. Well, now it's just showing null here, but let, ignore that uh, because we have to update the utility. But we can check the sys kernel interrupts thing, which now has these big arrays instead. Although all the gonna say all the numbers are zero. Oh yeah, because, <laughs> because uh, it has 64 entries. Hmm. I guess we don't need to do that. We can actually cap the span to the number of CPUs. That would be the right thing. So while this is the capacity, uh, the span can actually be shortened. So we can do that out of line as well. Let's 
span. Um, count. There we go. Ah, another chunky rebuild. Yeah, I, but I think this will be kind of reasonable. And then once this is working, then we got to print out um, one of these for each CPU that we have. So then we got to figure that out. Do we have n proc? We do. Why does it say one? That's not how many CPUs we have. Sys kernel CPU info. Wait, what? Oh, wait, <laughs> I didn't boot in. Um, I'm in the, I'm probably in a different terminal. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay, and now it's uh, a bit more deadlocky and crashy. That's a good sign. Four CPUs. Wow, look at me and my CPUs. Okay, so if I lsirq, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, but sys kernel interrupts. Yes, I now only see the bottom or the, the four counts per CPU. And this actually looks pretty promising, right? Like we have, um, you can see distinct numbers here. Very interesting. Um, Okay, so it seems like different CPUs are handling different interrupts. Very, very good. Um, so NPROC was working and what I, I wanted to see, what was the trick for figuring out how many CPUs we have? So I guess it's this trick right here. This tells us how many CPUs we have. Um, yeah, that's a fair enough way of doing it, I think. So let's say static size T um, system CPU count or whatever. I need to also unveil that. For reading, that's fine. And then, um, bum, 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 bum. this is a bit fallible, but once we have it, we can return. The thing like this. All right. Okay, so Let's get the CPU count up here. Okay. Then what's the easiest, cheesiest way to do this? Maybe with a string builder. Don't have to get fancy. Mm, CPU count. And then something like Wait, what's wrong with that? Oh, right, I gotta gotta try because it can fail. Uh, builder append f -f CPU number, maybe something like that. And we will put the I, okay. And then I guess, actually, I want to align this within, I want to right align this within, um, or left align it. Well, I want to align it regardless within a specific space. I don't know exactly how to do that other than cheating like this. So I'm going to cheat, <laughs> do a nested formatting thing. It's probably a nicer way to do this, but um, let's put it in a, uh, a field of width eight like this. 
and then uh, we'll make as many fields as we need, and then we'll dump this out here. Okay, and then we need to do the same thing for every um, every interrupt here. So we got to dump these out nicely. The call counts. Call count. Um, I guess we'll say like builder to string. Mm, wait, what is that even? To that's going to be a JSON uh, value as array, sure. And then I got a capture, sure. Okay, and then let's do the same kind of trickery tricks we did upstairs. Maybe we needed more than eight, actually. Let's let's give ourselves some some wiggle room and do ten. And there we just need to put the call counts. I to string, let's say. Can we make it happen? Let's try it out. I don't know if this is going to look perfect, but hopefully it will be an approximation of what I have in mind. Ah, <laughs> not quite. Um, because it's not called call counts anymore, right? It's per CPU call counts. Uh forgot about that. Oh, look at him go. Uh, okay. So it looks a little unaligned, of course. But in general, really cool. Uh, let's see, can we right align these things? So I think you can write a line this way. Uh, do we want to write a line these as well? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so now it gets a little strange here. Um, so, oh, this is right aligned within this range. Hmm, but this is actually a right aligned four space field, so I need to put a little bit of extra uh, at the start. Like one, two, three, four, and a the colon, and one more. Okay, almost there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just want it to look aligned. Uh, I think this, like the fact that it, the the default terminal size is not. Uh, enough to accommodate this is a little bit irritating, but how cool is this? Now we can see Well, we can see that CPU zero is handling all the interrupts <laughs> um, But we got these other CPUs are they are handling inner process interrupts inner, inner processor interrupts which makes sense they messaging each other uh, and the local APIC interrupt, I guess that's like um, the the APIC for that CPU. Kind of interesting though. Like, are we only using CPU zero to handle all incoming interrupts? That could probably be uh, a task that we could split over all the CPUs. I don't know why we don't do that. 
Interesting. Uh, anyways, I think we've basically achieved what I set out to achieve here, which is great. So let's see, where did we start? <laughs> there, was a, there was a fix me. Right, fix me, determine the responsible CPU for each interrupt handler. And I took that to mean we should determine how many times each CPU has handled a specific IRQ. Um, and that's what we've done. So we've made per CPU call counters, which are now visible with LSIRQ. Um, great. So first thing I'm going to do is just add that uh, max CPU count thing so that it's a constant that you can reference in the kernel. Kernel add max CPU count um, global constant instead of just hard coding the uh, x86 processor array to size 64. We now um, use a global that uh, you can also um, reference elsewhere. Um, bum, bum, bum. Not a global, I wanted to say a constant, named constant. Okay, and then, um, bum, 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 bum. kernel plus lsirq. Mm. Track per CPU. Track per CPU call counts. Uh, IRQ uh, track IRQ handler call counts. Yeah. This um, assuming I understand understood the fix me correctly. This. Um, I mean, let's assume that. <laughs> we don't have to say that, assuming that. This um, takes care of a fix me in the uh, sys kernel interrupts generator. Um, instead of only showing, instead of da da da. Also, the lsrq. Um, command line tool that uh, displays per CPU call counts or per CPU IRQ counts, I guess. Or call. Hmm. Uh, each generic interrupt handler now tracks number of calls at um, that each CPU has serviced. Cool. Okay. Um, I think I am pretty happy with that. So let's call it the end of the video. Um, and if you made it this far, then I Thank you for watching, for hanging out. Um, I hope that you like the Fix Me Roulette format. It is a fun format to make, I have to say. Uh, definitely going to make more of these. So um, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.